Hello chapets, how you doing? Have you ever sat and wondered what the meaning of life is? Well, for some people it's plain old 42, but for other people it is a refercimiento, you know? But anywho, it doesn't matter what you believe the meaning of life to be, the thing is we are all in pursuit of happiness. And I'm in pursuit of getting this right on the first take. Players are going to be reliving their life from their teenage years until the moment they die of old age. And you're going to be trying to live your life to the max. You're going to be spending time like workers in a worker placement game. And you'll be picking up projects and working on those projects. And you'll be finding a job maybe or getting into a relationship. And of course buying those material things that make you happy. Because at the end of the game when everybody's dead, whoever has had the happiest life is the winner. Let me show you how this game plays and how to set it up and then I'll tell you all the pros and cons of this game and then I'll leave it to you to decide whether you should waste your time getting this game and playing it. So to set up the game you're going to need to place the board in the middle of the table, not slightly to the left, not slightly to the right, but slap bang in the middle. Next you take the four stacks of cards, projects, items, jobs and partners and place them next to the corresponding places on the board. You then place out a number of project and item cards depending on the number of players. Also place next to the board the stack of black cubes. Players will need these to mark the level of items that they bought or the level of their job. Also place the money tokens and the three types of resource tokens. Knowledge, creativity and influence. Each player chooses a colour, takes the reference cards of that colour, six sand timers and the three cubes. The larger of the three cubes goes on the zero on the score tracker. One of the smaller cubes goes on the short term happiness space in the middle of the track and the other one goes on the stress track on the blue section with the arrows. The purple cube is used to keep track of the rounds. You place it on the teen space and each round it will advance. The three no entry tokens will go on the get job space, start relations space and overtime space. These actions cannot be done in the teenage round. You shuffle and draw three cards from the life goal deck. You place these face out for all players to see because these are a bonus scoring round at the end of the game. Shuffle and deal two child trait cards to each player. Then each player will choose to keep one of them and throw the other one away. This is a special power that you have during the game. It also has listed on the bottom your starting resources, so grab them now. Choose someone to be your start player and then you're ready to play. So you're ready to play. How does the gameplay work? Well, very simply, each player on their turn will spend one unity of time doing an action either depicted on the board or on some of the cards that they've collected during the course of the game. After that, play passes to the left, the next player does exactly the same thing until all the players have spent all of their unity of times and that will signal the end of the round. At the end of the round there's a bit of clean up and then there's a little bit of upkeep to do and then you're ready to play the next round. So starting with some of the actions on the board, these top three, if you place one of your unities of time there, you're just basically going to get three of whichever of those resources. You can, if you wish, place a second unity of time later on in the game in the same space, but if you do so, you're going to take one point of stress. You can also take a temporary job which will get you three money. Notice I'm not calling it a resource because it's money. You can also take a project. Placing a unity of time there, you can take one of the cards and place it in front of you. When you take a card, you immediately replace it. The projects come in three different types. There are single round projects. When you take one of these, you can choose any of the levels depicted. You place a black cube on that level to say that that is what you've picked. You play any of the resources needed on the left hand side of the box and you recuperate the resources, money, victory points or whatever in the right hand side of the box. A basic project is 
kind of the same. But you will have to work your way through from level 1 all the way down to level 4. And then there are the group projects. When you take one of these, you remove your unity of time from the board and you place it on one of the four boxes depicted. Again, you pay the resources to get the rewards. The thing about group projects is anyone can participate in this group project. Any spaces which have not got a unity of time on it can be chosen by another player and also yourself. The more people that participate in one of these events, there is a better reward at the end of this round. And then the last action here is spend. You spend your money to buy one of the activities or events. Again, you replace the card after you've taken it and you place this card in front of you. These cards are slightly different from the project cards. You can choose whatever level you want to start at, like the single round projects, but later on you'll have to do a level higher if you wish to do that again. The higher level items will have an upkeep cost which you'll have to pay at the end of the round. Whereas the activities, if you wish to take them again, you'll have to take a higher level to the one previously taken. When you use a unit of time in the rest space, you can decrease your stress by one. You can spend any amount of units of time in the rest space, but you can never decrease stress into a different color. So for example, if I was in yellow, I cannot decrease into the blue. The only way to do this is to have good health. After a while, you'll start to have a collection of cards in front of you, and you can spend your unity of time on those projects to advance them, or to upgrade collections, or to do trips and other things with your activities. You can place any number of time units on these cards, and it won't affect your stress. You won't have to gain a point. When you do, you move the black cube down a level, you pay the required cost, either in money or resources, and then you collect the benefit, which will either be in resources or money, or you may have a green smiley face. The green smiley face means that you advance in the short term happiness track. A plus one in this track means that you will pay one less resource when you have to spend resources. Remember I say resources, not money. And obviously the more short term happiness you have, the less resources you'll have to pay. Whereas if you go down in the track, you'll have to pay extra. The sun behind the cloud is like the relax box. You can decrease your stress by one as long as it does not traverse it into a different color. The only way to traverse a color is to do a project or an activity which has a heart as a reward. What would happen if you received a heart as a bonus? That means good health. You can go back a whole color from wherever you are. If you were in the middle section of the yellow stress track, receiving some good health will put you into the middle of the blue stress track. And as you can see, if you are more and more stressed, you'll have less and less time to play with. Whereas if you're calm, cool and collected and have a very good health, you'll have more time to do actions with. At the end of a round, what you do is you will gain rewards for your group projects that you've participated in. Let's say that three people participated in this project. For each token on this card, that player will get one interactivity, one victory point, and two money. The group project is then set aside. You also set aside any single round projects. You collect all of your hourglasses, and then you determine the first player. Whoever has the most short term happiness will become the first player. If there is a tie, it is the tied player to the left of the current first player that now becomes the new first player. You then reset all of the short term happiness to the middle and you're ready to do the upkeep phase. You advance the round marker, you discard all the cards on the board and replace them with new ones. You look at the stress track and see if you've gained any time or lost any time. You'll also have to check out how many projects, jobs and partners that you have in front of you. If you have more than three of these, you will gain one stress for every additional one that you have. Also, if you have two partners, you are going to gain one stress. You will then pay any upkeep costs. So if you have a job, partner or any items which require upkeep, which is the little bar on the left hand side, you will need to pay the resources to get the resources or rewards. If you cannot pay the resources, you will lose that card. You gain one point in stress and you lose one point in short term happiness. After the first round, you can remove the no entry tokens from the board. You can now get a job, start a relationship or do overtime. 
Jobs come in three levels, level one, level two, and level three. A level three job will cost a lot more resources than a level one job, obviously. But you can work your way up from level one to level two by getting a promotion. So you can promote yourself from a level one social job to a level two social job, but never to a level two science job or other job. In the upkeep phase, these don't only cost resources, they will cost you time, which you'll have to put into the spent time box. Partners work in the same way as projects. You need to start at the level one to work your way through and build up from a date to relationship to raising a family. But to progress in these relationships, you will need to have the requirements that each person has. Again, these relationships will take time in the upkeep phase. Again, you place into the spent time box. Whenever you take a job or a partner, you don't replace that card from the board. If you take the overtime space, you can grab two extra sand timers from the reserve. These can be used during this round, but the thing is you're gonna gain two stress as well. When the round hits the old age mark, you will no longer be able to do any overtime. So place the no entry token on the overtime space. Also, when the round marker hits old age, you'll see that you'll, all the players will take immediately three stress. If a player takes more stress and goes past the red bar, they are officially dead and they sit out for the rest of the game. And as you can see, the older you get, the more stress you get. So eventually everyone will die. Once all the players have shuffled off their mortal coil, that's when you'll do the final scoring. You'll have a look at the three life gold cards that were picked out at the beginning of the game and see if any of those apply to you. And then you'll get the points extra on top that's marked with the star. Also, you'll count up your resources and your money. And for each set of five that you have the same currency, you will get an additional point. And then the player with the most points is the winner. So, that's how you play the game. What do I think? So the pursuit of happiness is a board game that every geeky board game geek is gonna go gaga for. Yes, this game is a nice, solid, light kind of hearted game where you're gonna be living the life that you want to live. You'll be maybe a, um, a private investigator who like horse riding, going to the beach and doing producing on or as their real time job. Um, and that's the kind of stories that you're going to come away with at the end of the game. You're not going to be moaning that you're last. You're not going to be saying, yeah, I was first, I won. You're going to be coming away with these stories that you're going to be telling other people about when you've played this game. This game just invokes this great feeling of, you know, I've had a good life. So what makes this game a really fun game? Well, one thing that doesn't make this game fun is the rule book. Um, it is, uh, all the information is in here, but finding it can be a pain in the posterior. You will not get very many happy points. In fact, you'll get some stress points by reading this rule book several times because things are not laid out in a good fashion. It looks like it is, but it's not. For example, we ran into the situation where what happened if someone could not pay their resources in the upkeep phase, what happens? And you think it'd be under the upkeep phase section, but there is no upkeep phase section. And so you look at the back of the book and the back pages, cause it's like an end thing, but there's nothing there. But where did we find it? Right at the beginning in the overview. And it's like, Okay, that's, you know, it just says, oh, you, you place out an action, you take the card, and then it goes into a nice big section about what happens when you can't pay the overkeep, the upkeep. And it's like, well, it shouldn't really be there. It should be somewhere else. And then again, there was lots of little references with all the different types of cards. You've got all these cards and they're all slightly different. Some of these cards you replace when you take them. Some of these cards you don't replace when you take them. Remembering which ones do get replaced and don't is a bit of a chore. And so you'll have to look through the rule book and then you'll find that you have to read the whole rule book to remember which one's which. A nice kind of like spacing out, kind of repeating each card. This card does get replaced. This card does this. Because again, some of the cards you start at level one. Some of the cards you don't have to start at level one. Ah! 
a nice kind of like iconology would have helped out a lot with this kind of understanding what goes on with the cards. Although the icons and the technical terms are very, very well written. You understand that if you pay for um, creativity, you're gonna get five knowledge and two money. And that is, that is fun. So it gets like a, a kind of short term happiness for that. The components are really, really nice. You got a nice big board, which, you know, you can lay everything out on. You have these lovely, large, good quality cards with this fantastic artwork on it, which is amazing. You know, it's all individual and they're all geeky things as well. So like stamp collection and, and board game collection and TVs and sound systems and there, there, there is a lot of cards in this game and you won't see a lot of them coming up sometimes. The jobs in the relationships, yes, you will see them repeating themselves, but the, the projects and the items and activities, there is lots there. These, these wooden sand timers are excellent. Um, the tokens are good, but that brings me to a drawback of the game. There is a lot of, you know, on your turn, you place out a sand typer and then you give resources to take resources. And there's a lot of this going back and forth with the tokens and, and they just go everywhere. I wish there was a simpler system. Maybe each player had like a, a little bar um, with numbers on it. And then they have just one of each of the resources and the money. And then you just slide it up and down. Okay, I'm gonna pay that creativity to get knowledge and and you know it would have been nicer again having a bar there would have been a good indication of keeping your cards organized because it's not mentioned in the rules how do you organize the cards when you get them well for me you know having your trait at the top and then your projects your relationships and your jobs which would be above this bar and then all your activities items and projects which are finished which would go underneath this bar and then you have this nice arrangement and it makes it easy to count and easy to, to keep tidy. But it's not mentioned in the rules and there is no bar to keep track of your resources, which I think is a shame. Sticking with the finickiness of the game a little bit, the cubes are going to get displaced. And again, if you've not got your cards organized correctly, uh, you're gonna move them around and the cubes will just slightly move around a bit. What would have been nice is some of these like arrow things that you get in Forbidden Island that you can like slip onto the side of the card. And as you can see, it's standing up and it's not even moving. It's not even moving. This would have been a nice addition, you know, a packet of about 30 of those instead of the cubes. Just my personal opinion. Now the theme and the mechanics are really well meshed together. I think they go so well together, it is amazing. Um, I like worker placement games, and normally worker placement is you've taken Bob and you're sending him to the shops and he's doing this and he's doing that. And this game changes that to time and how you manage your time and how you do things. And I think it works really well in this game. Although the game gets complicated with all the different resources and the money, because you're, you're gonna have to kind of calculate. This is a very mathematical game. Um, it's not as easy as case of, oh, I've got some money, I'm gonna buy a rabbit. Rabbit's in the Kickstarter expansion. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that, but. Um, oh, I've got this and I've got that. Everything is thematic. You know, the, the fact that um, you go on holiday, it's gonna give you some short-term happiness. You go on a tour around the world, it's gonna give you some long-term happiness. Um, the fact that uh, the better you get at things, uh, you get more out of them. And the fact that at the end, you'll have to spend extra time, but it'll give you long-term happiness, or it might give you super ha a good health. It may help you relax. All of this works really, really well. But as I said, it's very mathy. You're gonna to need to calculate everything in advance. There is a way of, you know, playing this game and having a, a good kind of machine running because it is a case of you need to take an activity which you give this resource to get that resource and then you take an item which is gonna give you take that resource and turn it into another resource and it, you know, it just generates a rolling engine of resources so you don't have to go to the, the starting spaces and take just three resources, three studies, three whatever. But um, again, that can be hampered by the fact that maybe other players are taking the cards that you want, 
or it'd be hampered by the way that the deck just has been shuffled and dealt out. And that may slightly sour your engine and, and make you a bit more, but it, it does give to a kind of more of a replayability in that way. As I said, there are lots of items and projects and things that you can pick up along the way to make your life different. The game is a very tongue-in-cheek look at life, especially from a, like a commercial perspective. There's no real bad events, there's nobody that steals your car, there's no uh, holiday where it rains every day which makes you sad. Um, as I said, there are pets in the uh, Kickstarter, Kickstarter exclusive, there are also a few other cards in the Kickstarter exclusive which I haven't played with and haven't felt the need to play with. Uh, but the pets are quite nice because they give you points but at the same time they give you some short term happiness when these pets roll off of their mortal coil and they snuff it and they become the dead parrot so to speak. Um, the game is light and fluffy, it takes over an hour if you're playing with four players and four players is fun because there's a lot going on and everyone's got their own little story to tell. Not much interaction but you know apart from the group projects which people can get involved in and help get bonus points. Um, and Two players is not so bad, uh, and there is a solo mode. Check out my um, playthrough on a solo mode of this game where you have to beat a score of 50. Uh, and the Life Gold cards, they have these little bonuses on the bottom for the solo mode as well. So you that will help you hopefully win the game. I found the game a bit easy, but maybe I played it wrong. So you might want to check that out. Um, it's light, it's fluffy. It's, it's, it's funny, it, you come away with it with good stories. It's an interesting game. Well worth checking out. You may only play it once in your lifetime. You may play it many, many times. It's not a heavy game. It's not a game that you're gonna come away with and say that was a great game. You're gonna come away, as I said, with a good story. So hopefully I've pointed you in the right direction and whether The Pursuit of Happiness is a board game for you. So now, is my channel for you if it is please be a patreon subscriber and and help support this show um go and check out my uh, my website boardgameseverybodyshould.com as well and hopefully uh you have found a game which will fit into your collection uh, because you don't have to own every single board game out there you just need to own a few good ones so until next time ciao for now salute no that's Don't you just hate it when there's nothing decent on the box? So, why don't you go switch off your television set and go do something else less boring instead? <laughs> Name that kid's program if you can. In this video, I'm going to tell you about this game called The Networks. In this, it sees you as an executive for a TV channel and you are setting up five years of programming and you'll be hiring actors and you'll be putting adverts in these programs and hopefully after these five years are up, you have had the most viewers on your channel. 28. 28, for, for the four days. Wow, that's it. It's a bargain. Just bargain. go, for the love of God, people, just go. Eston, Gen Con, no, no. get there. Yeah, yeah, and then you can feel as sick as Jamie does. You can, you can walk away with all the bacterial diseases. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> one of the Americans. Whenever you saw an American, they would fist pump you. Well, this is, this, this is Eric Martin. <laughs> It's not fist pump, Barry. It's, that's not what you're <laughs> thinking of. <laughs>